Chapter 6 The Nature of Belief Bethany took a degree of solace from her lunch with Alice, and her day became brighter in the afternoon. Although she was tired, she functioned swiftly and found no lull between tasks to daunt her. When she returned to her apartment, she was delighted to find a message from Jody and one from her mother on her answering machine. Both told her how sorry they were for having missed her call and wishing her well. Jody said she had gone to see a local band on Saturday and didn't recover until Sunday night. Her mother told her she had gone one town over to see a show at a playhouse and then stayed the night. Bethany decided she should take to life with a little more reckless zeal after she caught up on her sleep. When she went to work the following day, she was as focused as ever, but exuded a light-heartedly sense of being that was infectious to the rest of the people in the office. She bounced about the tasks and preparations for her business trip and picked up a local paper to search for local music or art openings. The course of the rest of that week included two art openings, one visit to a museum, and attendance at one local bar for a series of live bands. By the time Saturday was upon her, she welcomed the rest and preparation for her trip. She packed her suitcase and made sure her paperwork was well in order. It was not the first time she was traveling overseas, and she knew the routine well. She read until she was sleepy and drifted to sleep with musical tones and artistic forms and colors reverberating in her memory. On Sunday, when she had time to reflect before her travels, she began to be nagged by a new notion that cultivated her sense of dissatisfaction once again. She pondered the extent of her effect upon the world. She wondered if her work, her experience of life, was helping to improve the world in any noticeable way. This thought branched further out, and she was inundated with a feeling of insignificance, as though her life despite the works she performed and the ideas she had championed into reality, was of such minuscule value to the world in its entirety that she would be better suited to simply coast through life without the pains and headaches of work, travel, and transmitting ideas. If her life and endeavors really had as little influence upon the world as she suspected, why was she putting up with the frustrations and heartaches instead of simply enjoying life? She did manage to speak with her mother and sister, but found no reprieve in conversing with them. Her mother reassured her about how proud she was of Bethany's work, and Jody tried to lift her spirits by comparing their lives. It was to no avail, though, and Bethany found distraction in the form of two glasses of wine and her book before going to sleep that night. The distraction, serving its purpose for the moment, left her with a grumpiness as she arrived at the airport and cleared the security checkpoints. She was ill at ease while waiting at the gate to board her flight and slumped into her seat on the plane. In the course of the 20 minutes that followed, she did her best to ignore the other passengers and hoped to be in the air soon enough. She had a window seat and was peering out to the runway. When she checked her watch and learned the flight was running late, she muttered a sarcastic, great just as a young man was taking his place in the aisle seat of her row. I'll do what I can to not crowd you, he said. Oh, she said, no, it wasn't about you. I just noticed that we're running late. I see. If they're taking a little extra time to make sure everything is safe and good, he pitched his voice towards the flight crew, then I say let them have their time. He smiled at Bethany, and she did not return the expression. 
He dropped his smile and then raised it again as he leaned over the empty seat between them and extended a hand. I'm John. She hesitated and then shook his hand. Bethany, she said. Good to meet you, he said. Is this your first time flying? No, she said. I travel fairly often for business. Me too, he replied, and lapsed into getting comfortable in the seat. Bethany found herself hoping that would be the end of their conversation, or that someone less loquacious would come and sit between them. The flight crew closed the doors and began the departure preparations. Within the following 30 minutes, the plane took off successfully, and they were moving through the sky. The in-flight roar of the engines did not dissuade John from attempting to strike up a conversation. Being in no mood for simple pleasantries, Bethany told him haltingly that she would rather not discuss things, as she felt she needed to rest. John accepted her terse retort with kind grace and opened up a magazine to read. Bethany fell asleep wondering why he did not turn on his light to read.